I'm Stephen Carson coming at you live from St. Louis, Missouri in these United States. Um, this is a bit of an overdue judging of the art contest from last year. Uh, I have two excuses. One is that like I am today, I got really sick around that uh, time of year when we would normally do it between Christmas and New Year's. And also I was determined to finally solve my internet problem, which uh, thanks to a, a gentleman uh, finally got solved. So hopefully we're not seeing the, um, you know, the, the stream acting funky uh, anymore since uh, Christmas when we finally got that sorted out with my internet provider. Anyway, uh, but finally have it going. Um, the show is, support for the show is greatly received at Subscribestar and you should support the show so I can get better, um, uh, so I can get better prizes for artists and draw the serious artists into this, as I'm sure Alexander Adams would agree. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> he actually gave me a dollar amount where maybe I'll start pulling in the, the real artists. So I've got a target, you know. Um, <coughs> Um, yeah, so Alexander, I was telling you my pet theory, and I, I love to throw out pet theories and have serious people destroy them. Um, so my pet theory, uh, and this is from, uh, so I did writing, I did creative writing in a um, in, uh, university along with my engineering degree. And in studying poetry, I remember I was um, shocked, not shocked, to find that one of my poetry teachers had written an essay about Dylan, basically saying Dylan is a serious poet. And if you don't recognize that, you're not really looking, you're just categorizing him because he writes pop song lyrics or whatever. You're not really looking at what he wrote and considering it. And then he spends the rest of the essay showing how brilliant Dylan's use of uh, poetry is in what he writes, you know? Um, and so of course that in regards to album cover, that got me wondering, you know, are, are, uh, are there, people who went unsung, artists who went unsung because they were not doing serious art, they were just doing a vinyl album cover, um, you know, who someday will be recognized you know, as creators. I don't know, but 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 basically, Alexander, I guess that the, the, the intuition is that it seems to me art does get made, but sometimes it just, it's in unexpected places for one reason or another. Yeah, I, I, definitely. I mean, I, you could say that um, a lot of, uh, as the um, opportunities for people to do figurative painting, figurative drawing, kind of diminish as conceptual art and photography hold sway, that they go into things like uh, comic books or mm -hmm. graphic novels. Right. And I should imagine that you've also got people going into um, album art uh, and illustration and stuff like that in a way that um, where in previous uh, eras, maybe they were going up to, you know, to join the academy and to become yeah. an acclaimed painter, they're, they're ending up in these sort of what we would consider sort of side areas, but they're actually doing extremely well and their, their skills are really suited for those. Right. Um, sorry, I had a thought and I lost it. Um, yeah, and I, I mean, um, you know, you, you can have a little too much of the democratization idea that, you know, there's good stuff happening everywhere. That's not exactly my point. It's more that I, I have this intuition that there's there's an elite, you know, there's a small percentage of artists who have the skills, have the discipline, work at it. And then for various reasons, yeah, they can't do what they want to do. Well, so I have a friend who's a sculptor. I, I don't know if I would have told you about him, Alexander. Um, and... Uh, he actually was having his clays destroyed in the seventies at the school of fine art here in, in town, um, mm -hmm. at night because he was working on figurative, um, in his student work, you know, and he did mm -hmm. other things as a professional artist, but that's, he was trying to get his basics right, basically, you know, and that was so out of fashion that he actually would get sabotage. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's, that's, that's horrible. I, I know that when I was at art school that we, um, we had a chance to do life life drawing, which is you know new drawing from the figure. Yeah. Um, and um, it was you know it was really it was sort of frowned upon. Like right? if you actually took this up, you'd be seen as sort of 
subversive you know it was quite rebellious because you know we were surrounded by some conceptual people and our our, our teachers were conceptual you know um, michael craig martin was the uh, head of not head of the department but he was the big wig and he was a big conceptual artist in the 70s um uh, i went to college in the 90s and he was still huge um so he, there were all this all this sort of stuff going on and then there was also uh, um interestingly enough it was part of a university and we had a, an anatomy class so you could actually go to a dissection room and draw from the dissected figure and there was mm. virtually no takers because <laughs> well well a it was very traditional and b it was you, you know you did kind of have to have a strong stomach for that sort of yeah, stuff yeah. so right. i never went but i kind of regret that i never went yeah yeah um you brought up a good point about vinyl album art there's a certain sort of era when we think about the great vinyl album covers because I've got a lot of albums. It just so happens I have about 500 vinyl albums. <laughs> um, and uh, the stuff from way back, like, I don't know, 40s or something, it just has like a picture of the artist on it, right? Yeah. And then you made a really good point. Uh, bookended on the other end, CD becomes the primary way that people get their music. And now it's smaller and it's just not, they don't want to put the time into creating sort of a beautiful cover. Uh, just doesn't have as much impact right no so yeah so you've got this sort of golden period when it's happening between yeah. from like basically from the early 60s through till yeah. um, you know sort of mid 90s or so that that was right. the that was the heyday but it's interesting that as as just as it starts to tail off you get people like um um dave stewart from eurythmics and mm -hmm. uh, peter gabriel from um, when he was so working solo and they start commissioning original artwork to go in the cd booklets so uh, although you're losing the large scale lp cover you're actually gaining uh, original commissions you know like peter gabriel for his last last two albums last three albums or something he, he was commissioning contemporary artists to do an individual work related to each song uh, and wow. so he'd have this in the in the CD booklet, and it's um it's really quite clever. And of course, you, this comes up when you get it on your playlist when you're streaming stuff and so on. So huh. it's a little bit of a revival. Yeah, yeah, right. And then, as you mentioned, uh, if, for for those who aren't in the know, I kind of know this for various reasons. But um, vinyl actually is making a slight comeback. It's not like it's going to defeat CDs ever again, but it's sort of um, people of musical taste, right? The, the, the elite <laughs> are starting <laughs> to buy vinyl again. Um, partially it has to do with DJing or something, but but I don't think it's just, it's a bigger market than that at this point. Yeah, and, and it, it, it goes beyond uh, pure hipsters. They know there are audio files and there are also yeah. people who have collected old music and they want to keep their collection essentially in one format. Mm -hmm. um, I, I kind of re regret, you know, I kind of, moved over into cds in the 19 i was buying vinyl in the 1990s and then i swapped over into moved over into cds i kind of stayed in cds all the way through but cds are now becoming rarer and rarer so you, you do get this you know like cassettes are not really made anymore but right. you can still get um cds and i go tend to go for cds simply because um you know I, I've, I've had vinyl records before and they get scratched and they get dirty and stuff mm. in there mm -hmm. Then you know they, they, it's easy for them to get warped, um, and actually they're not. They they can be quite pricey. So if you get like a really heavy, heavy gauge um, vinyl, um, and you know you get it in new packaging and stuff, you're still talking about like you know thirty dollars, thirty five dollars for uh, for an album or something. Uh, it's right, considerable. Yeah, so it appeals. It, it's back appealing to a very niche audience where at one time everybody who bought music bought vinyl in the 70s so, um and that's like i said i don't see that coming back but it's it it got really low because of cds and now it's actually gone back up you can it has it has it has it's, it's gone back yeah. up to sort of yeah. probably about late 90s early 2000s level now so it's quite respectable hmm. oh really oh that's yeah. bigger than i realized okay that's quite good yeah and what i did alexander um was uh i would go to a used record store and everybody was like buying things on CD and selling off their vinyl. So I would buy the vinyl as people were selling it off. And so I would walk out with like, here's all of King Crimson. I just bought it today, you know, 
right yeah and get it you get it you get it for a song it was, right, right exactly <laughs> yeah yeah um, so maybe now i i uh i'm sitting on a gold mine and i just need to find the right album collectors who will love what i have you know but anyway. um okay so the the challenge this year was to design um album covers it not for an actual album it's meant to be a work of imagination similar to <clears throat> what we did with flags and currency uh you know with the flag you would sort of imagine what the the country was or something um so similar here they're, they're just meant to imagine um an album and then create album art for it i don't know if there's any other rules i should highlight i think that's the main thing um i've been a little loosey-goosey with the deadline because we didn't have a lot of entries and a few people either entered at, just after the date or did a um a brush up you know a a second draft after the date and i just decided to accept it all so we'd have something for alexander to talk about so um okay so let's go to our first and uh let me make sure i get names right as i go this is from big brain content just gonna double check each time yes okay so let's see should i show front and back and then let you comment um yeah well uh yeah well let's um let, let well uh, let's talk about the front cover what do you what do you okay. well what I, what I noticed at the front is that this is uh like a great sort of late 80s style thing this reminds me of something like um uh, Latin Quarter they did Radio Africa which was quite a popular sort of reggae influenced song and this mm. sort of like slightly slightly political slightly edgy but you know friendly and approachable so that's what yeah. I think of when I see this and when I see the I like I like the African script that's um right. that's very nice like that, that it feels sort of quite late late 80s huh that's fun um oh I'm sorry I didn't understand that's Liz Truss over and over and over and over yes that's Liz okay. Truss. So, <laughs> so he so Kwasi Kwarteng was the Chancellor of the Exchequer that's the finance minister for Britain <laughs> during the the very brief rulership of Liz Truss, which lasted, yeah. I think, 40 days. So Kwasi Kwarteng was uh, <laughs> our finance minister for approximately 40 days before he disappeared, before he and his boss were unceremoniously removed by higher powers. Right. Oh, and uh, you may not know this, Alexander, but Quangos, we don't have that term in the U.S. Could you please define? Tell us okay, how to pronounce so it. Okay, so this is so Quango is a quasi-autonomous, non non-governmental body. So it's basically the government setting up these organizations that do things that the ministries used to do. Uh -huh. So, like regulating particular areas or uh, deciding on the regulations for certain uh, industries and so forth and so technically it's not part of the government but it is a, actually effectively an arm of yeah, the government because yeah. they're all appointees of the government so a quango is basically a, a bureaucratic uh, committee which oversees regulation right is this this thing where uh they're regulating speed offcom is this yep. one of those? yeah so that's a quango yeah a quango yeah yeah okay well it's in a way it's almost a little more honest than what we have where we just call them ngos and people might actually think that they are and yeah. then you dig into it and you find no 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 they're just but, you know like Qu Qu quango sounds like a sounds like an african sounds like an african band or an african name so right right it kind of fits doesn't it right right uh yeah and he's done a little bit of rhyming there quasi quango quango yeah. um okay and then the back cover is there <clears throat> oh and i'll just read out the words hm treasury is pleased to release in cooperation with hm commission on race and ethnic disparities this certified banging album by our own, by our own right honorable quasi quarteng ethnic minority and former chancellor of the exchequer exchequer please enjoy and react responsibly <laughs> yeah so that that's the he's um uh it, so it, it, this is uh the the titles for the tracks are being sort of printed on our currency in the same way mm -hmm. that um, they were busy making the uh, money printers go burr. Right, right. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm kind of like imagining that this is like a sort of like a sort of like a sort of tame sort of um, Eddie Grant kind of approachable kind of reggae, reggae style yeah, yeah. sort of fusion um, act um and these are the songs um right uh, very good 
Yeah, well, I'm old enough, Alexander, that um, two tone was part of my. Uh, yeah, so maybe there's a little bit of scar in there as well, a little two tone. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right, right. <laughs> um, okay, then let's see. Next is Iron Ardito. Uh huh. So this is Jet Steel. So hmm, I've got, got no idea what he's referencing there. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, and this is. I don't know what is this is is this is this is um looks like some sort of hair metal hair rock group um i i can i have to say as an artist i can see a few anatomy problems there you know i think, <laughs> I, th I, think I think the torso has become a little detached from the hips uh i would be <laughs> i would be getting him to a hospital pretty quickly if he looked like that <laughs> But by the way, Alexander, I'm I'm not an artist. I don't have the eye for it that my artist daughters and so forth have, and that you have. But I just can tell you that when I'm reading um, children's books to my twins, my littles, and the art, something happened in around the '70s where children's book art became just terrible. I don't know if you've seen this stuff, but um, and it is literally. I'm just like looking at this, and I'm like, anatomically, this is a nightmare. You know scrub my eyes this is just horrible <laughs> anyway i i, I yeah. I'll, I'll get annoyed I mean, by that choice of choice of choice of choice of choice of, choice of boots uh, i mean i i'm not sure that these are a, a period a period accurate but you know <laughs> interesting vibe to go with the brown boots and the black black with these black leather black leather um trousers i don't know it From looks orange answer, to me if you isn't the hair and the boots like both orange? Yeah, the hair and the boots are both or yeah, okay, so maybe that's sort of like a <coughs> orangey tan. Um I I I suspect that the artist when he was making this, he did not click on a different color. He did not <laughs> change his color. So either this is incredibly color coordinated or the artist was uh, not 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 putting very much time into choosing his colors. Right. Um Okay, let me see if there's any words. So jet steel and the fuel beams is what Iron Ardito put here. Um, doo -doo -doo. Uh, okay, and here is the back. <laughs> oh, that, that's that's a nightmare combination. Um, yeah. Uh, um, yeah, that's 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 not something I would pay to go and see. But, um, <laughs> Alex uh, Jones. Or he puts it as uh, a supergroup band with the raw, unfiltered talents of AJ, Alex Jones, The Musk, and Joe Silverback Rogan. <laughs> uh, it would be it would be a YouTube hit, but I'm not sure if I would be listening to it. <laughs> okay. Any further comments on that one? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm getting kind of triggered by those those rather rough edges. Uh, I mean, I know I know that's the aesthetic, but you know, all the edges. Oh, the, around the, the um, edges. Are, around the uh around the figures the, yeah the figures yeah 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 right yeah. photoshop it's, it's getting it's getting it's getting getting my teeth on edge <laughs> tin form moment okay let's keep going um okay this is mercian just making sure i'm saying the correct names as i go yep okay bleak yeah this is something that i remember uh um alexander is that um some of those album covers, if you didn't know who the band was, you couldn't tell which was the title of the album and which was the artist. You know? It's exactly what I was going to say. I'm not sure. Like, I'm guessing, I don't know. I mean, I, I honestly, I don't know, which is maybe, maybe there's a clue on the back cover, but yeah, uh, in terms of appearance, I'm getting a sort of like a sort of a, a trip hop late nineties vibe. You know, Sorry. like Portishead or Goldfrap or something. Yeah. Yeah. Sort of a little bit edgy and urban, you know, Bristol, Bristol scene from the 1990s trip hop, you know. Right. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I can't, I can't tell, I can't tell which is the, the album and which is the, and which is the artist. Uh, so that's, a, that's, a, that's a problem. Of course, if it was a real band, you'd probably twig, but yeah. Um, okay, and then the back cover of this. Sorry, I, kept, I forgot to. Degener oh, okay, it. right. Degeneration looks as though it's the uh, the name of the album, and it's um, that's the bleak that's is the, the artist. Yeah. That's the lead track. So yeah, clearly. So the band is bleak. 
and the and the um and the um and the album and the first track is generation right yeah uh, so it says so the bottom of about um oh no i can i got a spelling mistake oh i'm gonna mark that down Re <laughs> you see bottom recordings no, oh no, no recordings please no recordings yeah, on your album cover, <laughs> only recording this. Um, and also, I'm getting, I'm getting, I'm getting so triggered by the fact that the, the titles aren't actually in alignment. They're kind of moving out, oh. moving in and out. That, that, oh, no, I can't. I, I can't. see. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm going to yeah. mark, I'm going to mark you, mark you down for your spelling mistakes and for your alignment. It's right, I see what's visual. happening. It's. It's Great the, visual, the, the, but the one, the one, and the eleven take up less space, and so the whole title moves over, right? But that's not yeah. So really as your eye moves usually, down, it's sort of jumping out. Yeah. yeah, we wouldn't usually do that on an album cover. You'd align those titles. No, no, you'd you'd have it. You yeah, you'd have you'd have the text aligned um, at right. least. Um, but I, I like I like the visuals, really good visuals, and I like the. That's what I was going to ask. Color. Ask about on the on the two sides. They're very harmonious. The front and the back have the same feeling to them right it's not the same thing is it no it is not no, okay. it's, I, I guess this is a series of images that are or, or maybe even one image that's been uh, cropped differently but yeah i think it's a, it's a good image I, I like the splashes of color um, yeah it, it's uh yeah i mean the 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 the, the type um the, the writing is quite distinct from the background so you're not getting too much interference it's quite legible mm -hmm. using good use of, good use of space uh, it's just the alignment and that. I'll, I'll let the spelling mistake go, but the alignment really. No, <laughs> going to be tough. Okay, and then you didn't really comment. Uh, I guess same comments on the visuals for the. Yeah, front it's, it's, I right? think it's really good, really good um, visuals for the front. Oh yeah, and then notice that the um, album title has an effect on the uh, words, right? Where it's like, well, it's it's saying degeneration visually, right? Yeah. Oh yes. Well done. Yeah. So it's a sort of. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's a little bit, maybe it's a little bit goth. It's sort of, you know, like um, The Cure or something, you know, mm -hmm. late, late 90s, sort of moody. Yeah. And yeah, I like that visual effect on the, on the text as well. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> okay, excellent. Uh, let's see. Let's go to, again, make sure I'm doing this right. I think M okay. Mercian is, is admitting that his, his typing skills have let him down again in the chat. <laughs> so... <laughs> Okay, um, let's go to um, Noon Shake with his ultra light beam entry. Okay, really like this. This looks like um, sort of, yeah, sort of like a sort of dance, maybe dance music, electronica, sort of something from mm -hmm. the two thousands. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, really, really like the effect of this. Um, yeah, uh, so I think the I like the the text. Um, you know, good sans sans serif. Mm, yeah, filling up, filling up uh, the front cover, keeping it quite minimalist. And yeah, I'm 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 all for that. I like that. Yeah. Um, okay, back cover. Very simple. Yeah, very simple. Ultra light beam. So I guess that's the name of the artist. So I guess it's like a yeah. sort of so this is like a self titled first album of this sort mm -hmm. of, um, electronica band from the early early 2000s I would say um, yeah only only seven tracks so I'm thinking maybe these tracks are about sort of like six or seven minutes long um, right he has, doesn't he hasn't given the sides so this may be a CD um, mm -hmm. yeah so that, that's that's what I'm thinking but uh, yeah good design oh, oh no I, I it's like, not do, as do, 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 do you like the uh, the, the uh, record label? Yeah, Y Peepo Records. Yeah, yeah. Uh, For those in thank the you. Mind. I meant to call that out. Uh, no, we know it's vinyl because he did a mock up. Oh, okay. Isn't that nice? Wow. Well, and this I'm, this I'm... brings us to something that I remember being a part of vinyl. That of course you lose with. Well, they tried to keep it going with CDs. Anyway, I'll come back to that. But notice that the inside of the vinyl has a design on there, and that's something that you see in some of the old records. Typically, it's just a list of tracks, but sometimes they've actually brought the art onto the record itself in that center 
a bit. Yeah, it, it's it's great when they've so when you've got this um, going through, and also sometimes you have um, an inner sleeve, which uh, sometimes is or often they were paper, but sometimes they would be sort of like um, you'd have printing on them. Yeah, like and, a booklet, uh, more like a booklet, yeah. a large form booklet or something. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, so I, I think um, yeah, props that um, uh, to the designer. Um, this is, I have to say, this is my favorite so far. Mm. Yeah, it, it's I'm, it's bringing back my memory when you mentioned the the stuff inside there, that I, I remember there it being more typical that experiencing a new album wasn't just listening to it. I was listening to it and then I was looking at it and reading the material inside and maybe seeing some further visuals that were inside the, you know, the booklet or right. Yeah. So it was a little more of a little more of a rich experience at that time. It wasn't sheer and just here's here's sounds, you know. Yeah. And of course we, what you were doing if you had vinyl, then you actually had usually just had the one record player and it would be in your living room or it would be in your study and you would be and you would have to be there because you couldn't you couldn't be anywhere else in the house you didn't have like <laughs> bluetooth you couldn't walk around your house right. you mm -hmm. couldn't listen to it on the bus well, i mean like you 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 know, you'd put it onto a cassette or something if you wanted to listen on your walk or something but yeah you would actually have to physically be in the room with the stereo you'd have to be you you would be and that's why you were able to handle handle the cover look at the inner sleeve, read the lyrics and so forth, which is um, a whole kind of experience that you don't get now if you're just getting it through an earbud and you're walking around um, through a town or you're on the bus or whatever. Yeah, I forgot that um, CDs, I guess I've been looking, have not been looking at CDs that much. The bottom side would have the music, right? So you wouldn't put anything visual on there, but the top side uh, typically has art on it. Um, yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, at so least I, I, I've album. actually, yeah, I've actually got was listening today to, um, um, so Melancholy by, um, Smashing Pumpkins. There you go. Mm -hmm. So blast from the past for you guys. But yeah, so you had like, you had the front cover art and then you also had the back cover art and the listing of, uh, listing of the tracks and stuff. Right. Uh, and you would, you would open it up and there would be, um, there'd be visuals as well. Sometimes you'd have like lyrics list and, you know, a load of credits and stuff. And right. that's, that's something that I, um, that you get on the albums, of course, on the LPs. Um, the, this album actually was a triple album. And it get, gets to a stage when you're actually getting so much of that packaging and stuff that you feel like, oh, this is kind of like, you know, it's a bit too much, it's a bit overkill, but, um, <laughs> I, but I, I, do, I do love a good gatefold. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, very good entry here. Um, just looking over it one more time. Oh, um, it, it's a little unclear to me on this front cover, Alexander, but it almost looks like, you know, the, the um, dot pattern looks like it's meant to have a sort of a 3D shape. And yeah, part of it looks like the letters are meant to fit that shape. Yeah, it's it's... It's really, but other it's, parts it, don't. So. Yeah, because it is. It's kind of quite clever. Because yeah, sometimes the letters are seem to be mapped onto the dots. Yeah, but other times they seem to be detached. Uh, right. And also, you know, there's always that temptation. It's like you're always. Um, it's like when you look at clouds, you're always sort of turning them into like elephants or trees or okay. houses or something. The, the mind automatically right. looks for patterns. So when I look at this dot matrix, I'm thinking. Oh, is that a shoulder? Is that an arm? Mm, is this mm -hmm. is this some sort of object that I should be recognizing? And I right. cleverly, it isn't anything. I don't think not some not something right. specific. So your mind is like always on the verge of interpreting it as something, but actually it's not. And I think that's quite clever. It keeps you engaged. So I, I think that yeah. works really well. Right. Very nice. Um, okay, let's go to Schmolzy. Um, here we go. I make that bigger. There we go. Before the famine. Oh, the, now remember that he'd always already had one of the other entries had Radical Liberation Records. Well, th this guy's going for broke with calling out to the hosts here because uh, we've got Black Horse, me, and Mad Mercenary all represented right on the cover. So you know. So this um, is the ultimate supergroup then. Yeah, right. It's, and it's an international supergroup because Black Horse is Canadian. So of course this is like a this is a North American power trio. No, no, no. Mad Merc is Australian. Oh, right. Well, so, there you go. Even well, more they, so. 
yeah. that, so there you are you've got you got your northern and southern hemispheres you that you've got this yeah. is a, a world this this is a, a world encompassing super groups so. major diversity yeah yeah <laughs> um yeah so what do you think of the uh block style visual effect here i like it i i'm inclined to say it's a little bit busy i'm not mm. quite sure you know like we we know it's a record already why have we got the gramophone symbol on it um mm -hmm. you know you're holding it in your hands you're in the record shop you know it's a record you know <laughs> I, I don't remember having that on my rolling stones albums or my genesis uh, lps uh, yeah. but it's it's, uh, it's quite punchy it's very clear um some striking images yeah um i like it um not quite sure about the significance of the little figure at the bottom it reminds me a little bit of keith herring's work for on the malcolm mclaren album duck rock from early 80s which well usually that first usually that means that someone has record. died and they've drawn a chalk outline around the bottom Right. Yeah, but it, it reminds me a little bit of Keith Haring sort of like dancing figures. Mm. Um, okay. So uh, maybe maybe that's a like a retro reference. <clears throat> maybe. Um, okay, let's look at the back cover. Here we go. Uh, can can you read the top text? Yeah, back during the here I can make it a little bigger too. Okay, back during the famine of the mid-century, a few voices were making their voices heard deep in the intellectual backwaters. This re retrospective lets us hear their sorrowful insights once again. Wow. Okay, mid-century is this is this coming up? Because it's pretty grim. Um, <laughs> it's it's your, I, I tell you what, if this is mid-century and you're still looking the way you are at the moment, you're you're doing you must be doing something right. Right um yeah i have to say again i'm getting a bit triggered by the fact that the side one and side two are not distinct from the track listings themselves the tracks themselves oh, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah i feel like these should be italics or something or right you know something something to to distinguish them from the track listings so that that's kind of distracting me uh -huh. This is a pet peeve from uh, being a programmer. Um, that sort of blue or darkish blue uh, as a background, it is not great for readability. Now, I think with the, the words, the titles being a little brighter, that they're relatively readable. But then you get to the cacti at the bottom, and it's like hurting my eyes trying to look at oh, it. Oh, yeah, you know? yeah. Yeah, because <laughs> it, just, it just looks like sort of a blobs but uh, yeah you're quite right it is a cactus um that that blue reminds me a little bit of the blue screen of death which i have to say i haven't seen on any computer for the last 10 or 15 years i'm sure you've been seeing it oh, more recently than me good luck to you good luck to, uh, you've had good luck then <laughs> um okay any other comments uh i'm thinking of this as the the blocky or square kind of one yeah is i think it's, it's quite theme, it's quite right? it's quite distinct but um uh i'm it's not not my favorite so far okay and then we have one final one and he was only able to do a front cover but that's all right soul 117 and it says dagor dagarath the wanderer so this ma this makes me think of like um 2000s heavy metal or something death yeah. metal thrash death metal i was gonna say death metal yeah yeah so something around you know, like 2010 or something um yeah I, I yeah i have to say i really like it. it's quite punchy um yeah i know i know that the the sort of the goth script is gonna it's gonna set a few people off um I, i'm assuming that this is a self this is a an eponymous album because um the the wanderer so dagor dagorath the wanderer is i'm assuming the name of the artist right that's if the it's name. if, that, if, that if, would the, be if the yeah. yeah if the wanderer is the title of the album i want to see that t capitalized i'm sorry grandma right. nazi that right. i am right. i want to see that t yeah. capitalized agreed uh, but yeah, I'm, so, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna be generous and assume that that's the an upon yeah. Album. yeah why do you say the goth script is um uh, would set people off i mean i guess for assuming it's like a, a 
heavy metal kind of thing, they do have this thing where they, they call back to certain traditional elements. That's really typical, right? Yeah, um, I, I, yeah, and you see, like, uh, I think the Iron Maiden script was always um, was always gothic, um, right. and it's, it's kind of it's kind of shorthand for this is heavy or this is dark um, in right. subject matter and treatment. So it does actually quite 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 what work quite well because it's a good sort of semiotic signal that sends that says to you, you know, what sort of thing this is. This is not going to be, you know, this is not going to be dance music. Uh -huh. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right, and then what is behind him? It almost looks like a lampstand. Yeah, it, I'm, I'm. I'm guessing that this is like a. This is some sort of street lamp in a sort of in a in a war zone or in a or yeah. in like sort of foggy London town. This is just like a sort of a, a warrior from the future who's gone back to um, Baker Street and the the fogs of London. Maybe um, I don't know. Interesting. I'll no. have to listen to the album to realize what's going on. So, so um, I'm kind of thinking that the composition is a little more interesting here because the way he's sort of in the clouds and the cloud is covering part of him, right? Yeah, um, cause, so you, you, it's, it's, quite, it's quite dynamic, actually. So unlike the last one where we saw it was quite blocking, this one's quite dynamic because you've got a strong diagonal. Uh, right. And also you've, yeah. got a, you've got a large blank area, which is excellent for placing the text. I personally would have perhaps lifted the text up a little bit. It's getting a little bit mm. close to the edge for me. Yeah, yeah. But that, you that's when you're doing designs, when you're doing designs for books. Um, so, for example, I actually, yeah, so I actually got one of my books here. So when I, I, when I did this drawing, I left yeah. a big space in the middle that was just clouds that was just sort of clouds and there was nothing else there at all so and i knew that that was where the writing was going to go uh, so uh -huh. i designed it i actually drew it with that in mind and you can see that um this entrant has left a nice space where he's he can put the text and that um isolates it and makes it stand out uh i think that that's um that well right and then good angle. and then compositionally that means that you get a little sort of um uh, um a, a similar weighting between the upper left and the bottom right you know what I mean? yeah they so play off you, each other a little yeah you've you, you've got two elements of of interest so you've got the 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 you've got the rifle which goes diagonally across right. and then you've got the head and the street lamp quite close together in the top left and right in the opposite corner you've got the title uh which uh which worked quite well yeah when when my designery graphic designery friend would start talking to me about you know how does the eye move around you know how do you guide the eye around it i thought it was sort of crazy but as i've paid more attention and, and learned more I, I i get it it does um how do you put it when when people aren't doing their composition right it doesn't stick because we don't really take in the images as a snapshot right our yeah. eye moves around an image um and if you sort of are whether consciously or not are sort of designing with the way humans actually take information in you're going to be able to be, be more impactful have, have more ooh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna trigger oliver have more impact <laughs> yeah um that's uh yeah so what you've got is i think it's really good that you've got the you've got the text at the bottom right because your your natural your eye naturally starts at the top left because when you're reading you're always starting at the top left and you're working across and downwards. Mm -hmm. So yeah, to have to have the intriguing image, the powerful image, top left catches your eye, excites your attention, gets you engaged, and then you've got the information bit at the bottom right, at the bottom at the end. So this tells you retrospectively what you're looking at or who the author is or what the source is. So I think I think that's a really good way of doing it. I mean, I, and I guess Alexander, the reason I said it seemed crazy is it's just like you're 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 now you're designing for a process that happens in like a split second, right? Yeah. A hum, yeah. human glances at that. The process you just it takes longer to describe it than it does for it to happen. Right? Absolutely, it's just it's just an instant thing, and also it's like yeah. it's, it's an automatic reflex for like especially I think for everyone in the West. Uh, you know, if, if you're Japanese or you're Chinese, it might be or Arabic. Uh, the, it might work slightly differently because you're reading right. the other way or you're reading, you know, downwards. 
so but um yeah for most of us um that that's that's how you would think automatically right you'd automatically go up there okay so those are all the entries um and we haven't discussed this part i mean i guess it, if you have it figured out then we could just go to third prize and then second prize and then finish with first prize yeah um so uh, really annoyingly i'm gonna i'm gonna work on the basis of um the the covers of the names of the covers rather than the designers yeah. so my I'll, apologies. I'll find it yeah so i think that my my third choice would be bleak okay let's go to that right now yeah degeneration so that's mercian yep. mercian isn't it oh also i have to write this down uh okay and that is um yeah let me make sure i'm getting this right Mercian. okay excellent congratulations to him yeah any other comments you want to make about why yeah that it's, it's, a, it's a it's a really, it's a really yeah it's a really good image uh i like the use of color um yeah uh, mark, marking it down for its for its little its little typos it's it's um script on the back but some um, really uh, really good image and uh this is the sort of album that i think i would be i'd be listening to um uh yeah i was gonna say the image is uh got some power to it because um i think the easy thing to do would have had you know going along with bleak right um would have to have that sort of grim red and, and dark cloudy look you know overcast looking day buildings and not have those splashes of color in the window but they threw in the he threw in the splashes of color in the window um both there and on the back cover right yeah, yeah. and that brings some kind of visual interest number one it's just a little unexpected a little surprising and number two it starts getting you thinking you know like yeah so, absolutely because because it, it make it starts you think about like um an apocalypse or um you know you get all sorts of video games where they have strange effects um and you're actually existing in this world and this is the sort of a place where you might you might expect to be in a video game you might be immersed in that environment um yeah and um yeah and also i like the fact he's chosen he's chosen different um different fonts for the uh, artist and the band uh, the title yeah right right make it a little easier to tell them apart okay thank you excellent number two number two i would go for our last one i go for dagor dagor dagorath okay Writing that down. yeah really really great design as i said exciting competition uh, composition got a lot of got a lot of punch got some energy in with this strong diagonal uh i like the sort of the the fuzziness the sort of the grainy sort of uh sort of cathode ray line mm -hmm. effect um a really muted muted use of color which i think is quite effective for this sort of image um mm -hmm. it would have been easy to go for sort of like gray or brown or, or black but um i quite like this sort of sort of murky violet um and the sort of the fuzzy 3d uh, 3d glass effect um so yeah. yeah that's really good i would have loved to have seen a back cover marking you down for that <laughs> um yeah i uh <clears throat> as a technology guy you know we'll we'll be like um so happy when we get something you know a visual to be more sharp and everything right and then meanwhile the visual artists will be like actually i kind of liked how it looked before <laughs> before you made it better you know? <laughs> well, rem reminds me of the time when the first time when jimmy hendrix went in to play for he did a session in uh, a bbc studio and and this this uh the audio engineer was saying uh uh jimmy jimmy i think we've got a problem we're getting a bit of feedback from your amp. <laughs> nice. true story <laughs> uh -huh. <clears throat> okay and then um number one number one is going to be ultra that sort of that okay. dance electronica cover yeah yes really yeah, good really um got got me really engaged it's just it's 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 enough to keep you uh enough to keep you wondering enough for you to try and spot patterns uh really distinctive this is the sort of album that you'd be able to see across a room across a, uh, a record store and you'd sort of yeah mm. that's that will catch your eye right yeah yeah that is an interesting uh thing um the whole uh 
getting people's attention conundrum, right? Which um, I guess that's always an issue with whatever well, it, kind of it uh, reminds me of. Um, oh, I forget forget the name of this. It's stupid, but the 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 album from um, what was it um, from Joy Division? Mm -hmm. uh, what is it? The the one with the yep. the sound signals. Really, yep. really so simple, and yet you can you can see that you can see that at fifty meters and recognize it, and it's such a it's such a beautiful simple design. And this is this is not this is not quite at that level, but this is, yeah, this would really catch my attention. It's really good. Excellent, thank you. Um, I realize. Let's see if I can do this really quick. I realize what you would not have seen, um, because I just threw it up right before we got started, is the um, thumbnail for today. I asked the graphic designer to. Uh, uh, here we go. It, it's it's. Uh, by the way, you know you're sharing your screen at the moment. Um, Oh, okay. no, good. Yes. There we go. Okay. Yeah. So I just asked him to put a thumbnail and just pick some album covers he liked. Mm. So <laughs> I, I, I think I, I actually didn't recognize every one of these. Um, oh. And and here's and here's something that proves that I'm completely wrong and I'm an idiot and people shouldn't pay attention to me. The Iron Maiden script is of course not gothic at all. It's, oh, it's, it's a weird yeah. sort of fan, fantasy invented. Um, right. Invented script, but yeah, that's not gothic. Um, yeah, no, no. But I see I why you remember. Made the mistake, I remember right? it was because... very distinctive, but I yeah, it's not gothic, is it? I see why you made the mistake though, because they are using a font that's meant to imply that like heaviness or something, right? Yeah, it's just they did something different than gothic. Um, yeah, the only one I suggested was Dark Side of the Moon, just because to me it's obviously a, a well-designed, striking cover. Yeah, I think that's what hypnosis. Uh, big designers in the seventies. They were doing stuff for Genesis, Peter Gabriel, Pink Floyd, really? lots lots of other bands as well. They were they were a huge design group then. Oh, okay. Um, right. Okay. Anyway, thank you very much. Sorry to everybody for taking. Oh my goodness, about two months longer than I should have to get this to get this uh, judging done. Um, really appreciate. Alexander joining us as a judge for the first time. Hopefully I'll be able to get you back for another art contest. And well, here's the problem, Alexander, as Farrell mentioned. If I get the stakes up high enough, then the judges are like, because Farrell made a comment like this. He's like, if you if if your prizes get up to a certain level, I'm not going to want to be a judge. I'm going to want to be entering something, you know. <laughs> so that that becomes the challenge, right? <laughs> well, I, I feel I feel like I would have to step back. You know, I'm such a senior figure. In our, in our in our circles, it would be unfair of me to deprive younger and uh, up and up and coming artists of of a prize that that should be theirs, that should be a stepping yeah. stone for them to reach the level that I am already at. That's, That's right. Yeah. You don't want to be a ringer in this game, yeah. right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Say it again. I'm open to bribes. <laughs> You're open to bribes. Yeah. No, no. Um, so. Um, all I put, and I hope this was the appropriate thing to do, especially given what we're doing today, I did not point to your Twitter. I pointed to the wonderful domain, alexanderadams.art, because I thought that was the right thing to bring people's attention to, since that's what we're doing on this stream is talking about art. And so if you go to the video description on YouTube, uh, I'm simulcasting a Twitter too this time, uh, you will um, be able to go to that URL or just type in alexanderadams.art. Great domain. I was complimenting Alexander on it the other day. I didn't even know there was a dot .art. And of course, the fact that your name, your initials are AA, I mean, it kind of, it's amazing. <laughs> yeah, it's, well, yeah, so this is, if anyone's um, visited my website in the past, go back and check it out now because it is a, a completely new website that we launched on Valentine's Day on the 14th of February. So go and check it out. There's a whole bunch of pictures that have been sold to museums, some classics. You've got some uh, exhibition shots so you can see the work on the walls. And there's also some new stuff, uh, smaller stuff, um, some of which is available to buy. Um, also, if people, people generally want to support my work, they can go to alexanderadams.substack.com. That's my Substack channel. Uh, and paid donate and paid um, subscribers there are always very welcome because that supports my work more generally. Um, yeah. If anyone's interested in portraits of authors, um, so for example, um, we've got some of uh, Mosca and who else? Carlisle has sold out, but we've got um, 
Um, yeah, we've got a, one of Canuck Hampson and we've got a, a new one launched, which is um, Lovecraft, a Lovecraft portrait. If you go to mm. Imperium Press and you go to their merchandise page, your page, you'll find my original Lino Cup prints for sale there. Nice. Yeah, and you got to go to alexanderadams.art to see the uh, tough looking photo of Alexander there. <laughs> this is this is why I naturally am. I don't, I don't, I don't, know, don't know what you're implying. I don't think it's, it's a staged or artificial at all. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you very much, sir. Thanks, everybody. And um, oh, I haven't been paying attention to chats or anything. Okay, I think I'm good there. Let me just double check two places and then we'll stop. <clears throat> And I will probably go lay down again. Oh, wait, Sam153. Um, he just donated money on subscribe, sir. Thank you, sir. A, a regular supporter as well. And he says, great appearance on UO. Cheers. So he's referring to my last time on Unpopular Opinions, which was last week, maybe? I, I can't remember. Week before. Yeah, I, I enjoyed that also. It's, it's good to see you there. Thank you. Okay. I think that's it. Um, all right. And that's it. I don't have credits with this thing. So, okay. Bye, everybody. <laughs>